Over the past century, nuclear nations have conducted a variety of nuclear tests. The power of the atom is a scary but also an amazing thing to witness. Today, we'll be taking a look at the top 15 most incredible nuclear tests. Number 15. The RDS-1 While the USSR was no stranger to nuclear testing throughout the Cold War, its nuclear program began with a bang when they launched their first ever nuclear weapon on August 29th of 1949. Known as RDS-1, it was built in a similar fashion to the Fat Man plutonium bomb that the U.S. had dropped over Nagasaki, Japan, during the Second World War. Now, a lot of the info around the explosion still remains under wraps, but what we do know is that the blast had a yield of 22 kilotons. Interestingly, the Soviet Union also brought approximately 50 aircraft and 1,500 animals to the testing ground in order to examine the bomb's effect on both military vehicles and life, with the researchers finding that the bomb was even more destructive than they had originally thought. Regardless, it shouldn't come as a surprise that the largest effect it had was outside of Russia, as it was this bomb that truly challenged U.S. nuclear supremacy and helped kick off some of the worst years of the Cold War. Number 14. The Trinity While most credit the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki as being the first ever nuclear bombs, there were in fact several prototypes built and tested beforehand in order to ensure that these would accomplish their goals. Perhaps the most famous of these is the Trinity, as it's largely considered to be the first nuclear device ever detonated. This detonation occurred on July 16th of 1945, where it exploded 56 kilometers southeast of Socorro, New Mexico. It was part of the infamous Manhattan Project and had a yield of about 22 kilotons, making it comparable in strength to the bombs that would be dropped in Japan later that year. Due to the war, the U.S. Army had to tell the public that no nuclear test had happened, with them instead saying that a remotely located ammunition magazine containing a considerable amount of high explosives and pyrotechnics had exploded. And while it would take some time for the explosion to be declassified, it stands alone for being one of the most important in world history. Number 13. Operation Desert Rock Of all the nuclear tests on this list, Operation Desert Rock is widely considered to be the most controversial. Undertaken by the United States at the Nevada Proving Grounds between 1951 and 1957, these were essentially a series of tests to help determine how soldiers would react to radiation poisoning. In short, this meant that the troops would watch a nuclear explosion go off and then have to do training exercises to mimic being out in the battlefield. In most of these exercises, multiple bombs would be dropped and about 50,000 men ended up being subjected to this operation. As you might imagine, these soldiers were misled into believing that the radiation poisoning would be very minor and that radioactive dust could be simply removed from them with a broom. However, due to the fact that the radiation they were exposed to was severe, a large percentage ended up having radioactivity-related health problems further down the line. Number 12. Test number 219. While test number 219 may be one of the largest nuclear bombs to ever be dropped, it's also one of the most mysterious. Detonated on December 24th of 1962, over the North Russian island of Zovaya Zemya, it had an impressive yield of 24.2 megatons. For reference, this is theoretically large enough to incinerate everything within a nine and a quarter square kilometer radius of the drop site, and enough to give third degree burns to anyone standing within a 5,000 square kilometer radius of the site as well. However, the USSR was extremely secretive about everything relating to this test, and as of now, there have been no publicly released photos or videos of this explosion. Thus, while the bomb was undoubtedly massive, its mushroom cloud will have to remain in your imagination until Russia decides to one day release the footage. Number 11. Project 596 While the USSR was the real heavyweight in the Soviet bloc in the mid-20th century, China was emerging as a powerhouse as well. And while they were a little late to the party in terms of nuclear testing, they eventually deployed a nuclear bomb of their own on October 16th of 1964. Built as the first installment of China's Two Bombs, One Satellite program, the weapon in question was a uranium-235 implosion fission device. Dropped on the infamous Lopnur testing site, it had an impressive yield of 22 kilotons and led to worried reactions from both the United States and USSR alike. And while China would never go on to actually detonate any nuclear warheads abroad, the Chinese would nonetheless go on to perform 45 more tests at the base for decades to come. Number 10. The Smiling Buddha 
While the Smiling Buddha may be one of the most ironic names given to a weapon of mass destruction, it was in fact the term that India used to refer to its first nuclear bomb. Believe it or not, India actually started its own nuclear program all the way back in 1944, but at first it was only used for so-called peaceful purposes. However, in 1960, India began to create bona fide nuclear weapons, but due to a variety of political factors, it wasn't until 1974 that the weapon was finally completed. Now, unlike many more conventional nuclear bombs, the Smiling Buddha was not meant to be dropped from an airplane, but was instead detonated underground, with the explosion taking place under India's Pokhran test range in the Thar Desert. While the actual strength of the bomb is still unclear to this day, most experts agree that it was likely somewhere between 4 to 6 kilotons, although some official reports stated that it was closer to 12. Unsurprisingly, the bomb gave Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi a massive popularity boost domestically, as it was a source of pride amongst Indians nationwide. However, neighboring Pakistan largely denounced this nuclear test, and it certainly served to further sour the already tense relations between the two countries. Number 9. Operation Hurricane While the USA and the USSR take the cake for being the first two countries that detonated a nuclear bomb, the UK came in at a close third when they carried out Operation Hurricane. Now, Britain actually began developing nuclear bombs along with the Americans all the way back in 1943, but their cooperation came to a half at the end of World War II. This forced the British to continue the program alone, and after years of development, they finally finished their first plutonium implosion device in 1952. Now, a lot of thought was put into exactly where the testing should take place, as various areas in the Pacific, Canada, and Australia were considered. However, the British government eventually settled on the Montebello Islands in northwestern Australia, and they chose the southeast corner of the Hermite Island to be the testing site, as it contained no human habitation for more than 160 kilometers downwind. The test was conducted on the morning of October 3, 1952, with the explosion occurring 2.7 meters below the waterline and producing a yield of 25 kilotons. However, this wasn't the only nuclear test that was to occur on the Montebello Islands as just four years later, two more were performed as part of Operation Mosaic. Regardless, this test put Britain on the map in terms of nuclear testing and ensured that for a small while, it didn't fall too far behind the emerging superpowers of the US and the USSR. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. Chagai-1 while Pakistan is not exactly world-renowned for being a nuclear powerhouse, they have several nuclear weapon tests throughout their history. However, of all of them to have been conducted, none quite match that of Chagai-1. For reference, Chagai-1 was the codename for five simultaneous underground nuclear tests that occurred in Pakistan's Rashko Hills on May 28, 1988. By most metrics, this area is remote, isolated, and unpopulated, and thus was the perfect site for this event. Now, the tests all occurred below ground and resulted in a total yield of between 12 to 20 kilotons by most accounts. And while they certainly acted as a show of strength, they also put Pakistan into hot water internationally, as the tests ultimately led to economic sanctions being placed on both Pakistan and India by a number of major powers, such as the United States and Japan. Regardless, the explosion is still a source of national pride in Pakistan, and various commemorative monuments exist to this day in order to celebrate the legacy of Chagai-1. Number 7. The North Korean 2017 Nuclear Test North Korea has always been a nation shrouded in secrecy, yet their nuclear capabilities are definitely up there in terms of covertness. After all, the country makes a point of giving extremely vague details whenever they perform a nuclear test and this was certainly the case in their most recent round of testing. And while the information we have on hand isn't all that extensive, what we do know is that on September 3rd of 2017, a 6.3 magnitude explosion was detected by South Korea. Scientists believe that the blast took place 24 kilometers northeast of Sunjai Beijam, North Korea, which is an area located near the site where North Korea has detonated nuclear weapons in the past. According to the Korean Meteorological Administration, which is South Korea's official weather agency, the blast yield was likely somewhere between 50 to 60 kilotons. Unsurprisingly, this led to uproar across the Western world, with Donald Trump even threatening to either go to war against North Korea or stop trade with any country doing business with the dictatorship. However, once the dust had metaphorically settled, the situation smoothed over without any serious military-backed repercussions. Number 6. Operation Crossroads 
If you happen to be from the Marshall Islands, the chances are you're not exactly a fan of American nuclear testing. After all, this small island nation bore the brunt of American nuclear tests for years. Yet the first of these occurred via Operation Crossroads all the way back in 1946. Now, the purpose of these tests were to investigate the effect of nuclear weapons on warships, and the operation consisted of two bombs known as the Gilda and the Baker. The Gilda was the first to be detonated, with this bomb being dropped by a B-29 Super Fortress onto Bikini Atoll on June 30th of 1946. Registering in at 23 kilotons, it was reportedly dropped about 650 meters off course, and thus didn't have the same destructive impact that the planners had hoped for. Regardless, it did a number on the animals that were tested during the detonation, as the 57 guinea pigs, 109 mice, 146 pigs, 176 goats, and 3,000 white rats that had been placed on 22 target ships. About 60% died as a direct result of the bomb. However, while Gilda was certainly quite destructive, Baker was arguably even worse. This weapon was suspended beneath a landing craft for the detonation, meaning that it exploded underwater. It too had a yield of about 23 kilotons, but unlike the Gilda, a number of things went terribly wrong during this blast. Most notably, despite the Navy hoping to bring all of the ships used in the test back to the United States, two battleships, one aircraft carrier, and three submarines all sank in the endeavor. While practically all the rest had to be abandoned due to the intense radioactive contamination they experienced. Therefore, while the Army did certainly learn a lot from Operation Crossroads, it certainly didn't go according to plan. Number 5. Gerbois Blue While France may not be a heavyweight in nuclear testing, they were nonetheless pretty early to the game in terms of deploying their first nuclear bomb. That's because on February 13th of 1960, France detonated the Gerbois Blue at the Saharan Military Experiment Center near Regan, Algeria, which at the time was controlled by France. Now, while the bomb was named after a small desert rodent known as the Gerboa in English, it was far from small in terms of its effects. That's because this 70 kiloton bomb was relatively large in size, and its detonation made France the fourth country after the USA, USSR, and the UK to set off a nuclear bomb. In terms of impact, it was a smashing success, as it hit its designated strength targets accurately. However, its implications went far beyond the Sahara Desert. You see, the explosion led to the outcry among several African nations, who were worried that the radiation would negatively affect their cities. In particular, the country of Morocco withdrew its delegates in Paris. The country of Ghana froze all French assets in the country, and several African intellectuals actively protested the testing in Europe. However, this ultimately didn't stop the French from using the Saharan testing facility at a later date, and it wasn't until 2009 that France chose to financially compensate the victims of the bombings. Thus, while the Gerbois Bleu may have been a success, it caused a lot more headache than originally intended. Number 4. Ivy Mike While the nuclear bombs dropped at Hiroshima and Nagasaki may have been the first and last who have ever been used in combat, Ivy Mike stands apart for being the first thermonuclear weapon to ever be detonated on Earth, also known as a hydrogen bomb. These are weapons whose power come from the nuclear fusion of isotopes of hydrogen, such as deuterium and tritium. This landmark bomb was not dropped by plane, and instead was housed in what looked more like a nuclear building than a nuclear weapon. This meant that Ivy Mike was not actually a serviceable weapon, and instead its planners intended it to be a proof of concept for future multi-megaton detonations. And while this made many people wary of the bomb, it was nonetheless detonated at Enowetak Atoll in the Marshall Islands on November 1st of 1952, and produced a yield of 10.4 megatons, and had a maximum radius of between 2.9 to 3.3 kilometers, and a maximum height of 41 kilometers. This created a blast crater that was 1.9 kilometers in diameter and 50 meters deep, and ultimately led to many of the surrounding islands being hit with debris and contaminated with radiation. Yet beyond its physical destruction, Ivy Mike had much wider implications in the scientific community. The fuel tanks on the airplane's wings had been modified to scoop up and filter passing debris. This debris was then used to make a number of important discoveries, but the most important of them by far was the discovery of two new elements, Prior to the explosion, the existence of Einsteinium and Fermium had already been hypothesized. However, after Al Giorso of UCLA Berkeley examined the filters, he was able to confirm their existence. Thus, while this explosion may have been extremely destructive, it certainly was of great value to the U.S. nuclear program. Number 3. Castle Bravo While the United States has made multiple nuclear bombs, Castle Bravo stands out for being the strongest of them all. 
tested as part of Operation Castle. It was the first in a series of high-yield thermonuclear weapons that were dropped over the Marshall Islands between March and April of 1954. The bomb was housed in a cylinder that weighed in at 10 tons and was detonated on March 1st on an artificial island off a reef of Namu Island in Bikini Atoll. Upon being detonated, researchers soon realized that the amount of lithium-7 reactions taking place were much higher than anticipated, causing what was supposed to be a 6 megaton yield to balloon to 15 megatons. Unsurprisingly, this caused the bomb's mushroom cloud to come in at an absolutely massive size of 14 kilometers high and 11 kilometers in diameter, and this had many unintended effects on the surrounding areas. Perhaps the most immediate detriment of the miscalculation was the damage on the atoll itself. The U.S. Army had a number of buildings filled with measurement equipment on the far side of the atoll, and due to the unusually large blast, most of the instruments and data recording the explosion were destroyed shortly after detonation. The U.S. also had to deal with the fact that the fusion reactions were quite dirty and produced a large amount of fallout. This was problematic because it caused many areas east of the explosion to be unintentionally contaminated with nuclear residue. This became a real issue because these areas were inhabited islands. The U.S. had no choice but to compensate those affected for their injuries, as the radiation led to numerous cases of cancer and birth deformities across the islands. When you consider that the test ultimately was not that useful scientifically and led to traces of radioactive material spreading as far out as Australia, India, and Japan, it became clear that this test was a whole lot more harmful than it should have been. Number 2. The SAR Bomb Of all the nuclear bombs on this list, none quite meet the size and scale of the SAR Bomb. That's because it holds the record for being both the largest nuclear weapon ever set off and the most powerful human-made explosion ever recorded, thanks to its yield of over 50 megatons. Meant to be a demonstration of Soviet strength, it was dropped on October 17, 1961, over the northern Russian test site in Mitsushka Bay in a modified Tu-95 bomb carrier aircraft. Giving off a flare that was observed as far away as Norway, Greenland, and Alaska, its shockwave circled the globe three times, and it was so strong that it destroyed every building located 55 kilometers around the blast site, while completely shattering windows thousands of kilometers away. Unsurprisingly, this upset a number of non-Soviet countries who were affected by the blast. More specifically, the countries in question were the Scandinavian nations of Finland, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark, who condemned the testing as an act of aggression. However, because they had no real sway of their own, there wasn't much they could do about it. What's interesting about this bomb is that it was a very dialed-down variation of the original version. In its initial form, the bomb would have been able to yield a blast of 100 megatons, which would have caused substantially more damage and likely would have affected a much larger amount of countries. However, it was thought that such a large explosion would have caused too much nuclear fallout, which due to the explosion's location probably would have had a devastating effect on many cities in the Soviet Union. In order to limit the amount of this fallout, the third stage and possibly second stage had a lead tamper instead of a uranium-238 fusion tamper. This was significant, as it eliminated the fast fission reactions in the explosion, therefore making it of the cleanest nuclear bombs ever created, as it generated a very low amount of fallout relative to its yield. Regardless, we think it's fair to say that most would hope that a weapon as large as the SAR bomb will never be dropped again. Number 1. Operation Hardtack Out of all the Cold War nuclear tests, Operation Hardtack was easily one of the most expansive. Occurring over a period of five months between April and August of 1958, it consisted of 35 different nuclear explosions over various parts of the Pacific Ocean. The operation had three main objectives. The first goal was to help develop new nuclear weapons, as the nuclear arms race against the Soviet Union was in full swing by this point. The second goal was to examine how underwater explosions affected military assets such as Navy ships, as this info could be used to plan hypothetical nuclear attacks. The final goal was to analyze high-altitude nuclear tests, as the military was hoping to try out some defensive practices for combating ballistic missiles. Now, several of these tests ended up being successful in achieving these goals. However, perhaps the most notable of them all was the Hardtack Umbrella. It was the second underwater explosion of the Operation Hardtack series, and was conducted in the lagoon of Anahuitac Atoll in the Marshall Islands. Detonating at 11.15 a.m. local time, the spray dome resembled a vertical column, and after 20 seconds reached its peak height of over 1,500 meters. With its base surge coming in at 3,000 meters downwards and 1,800 meters sideways in all directions, 
This ultimately left a blast crater measuring in at 910 meters across and 6.1 meters deep at the bottom of the lagoon, and the explosion was large enough to severely damage one of the Navy's ships used in the bomb's testing. Both Umbrella and the other hardtack series bombs ended up being very useful in giving the U.S. military an idea of how nuclear bombs interacted with water. More specifically, they found that underwater nuclear blasts created less fallout, generated relatively low amounts of direct gamma radiation, and had an impact shock that was less than what was previously expected, as the effects of the shockwave were negligible on most of the Navy's destroyers in the test runs. However, they realized that the blasts had both large amounts of radiation in the initial base surges and the ability to disable lots of equipment in the test destroyers, thus making them a valuable weapon against enemy navies. Therefore, while these blasts were certainly quite destructive, they were extremely valuable as well. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular Top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.